Hello there. In this video we're going to be discussing another application of exponential equations and functions known as Newton's Law of Cooling, which is given by this representation here. T of t is equal to t sub s plus the quantity t sub 0 minus t sub s times e to the power minus kt. We'll be discussing what each of these letters and variables represent and also go through a couple examples on how to use it. Alright, so let's begin by discussing what each of these individual variables represents. So to start, let's start with little t. So little t is going to represent time. Capital T of t is going to represent temperature at time little t. Uh, t sub s is going to represent the surrounding temperature around the object, around some object. T sub O is going to represent the initial temperature of some object. So when I say some object, this some object and that some object is the same exact object. And lastly we have E, that's just the natural log uh, base E, 2.7182, and so on. And then the last thing we have is this little K. Uh, that's going to be a rate parameter. So what is going on here with this model is we're going to have an object, uh, for example, a really hot object, and we're going to put it in, say, a cool environment or maybe a hotter environment. Or we might have a cold object, and we place it into a hot environment or a colder environment and of course that temperature of that object will change based on the surrounding temperature. Right? So that's pretty much what we're looking at here. So let's look at a couple scenarios um, to sort of analyze this model. So let's suppose uh, that T0 is greater than Ts. So that means the initial temperature is hotter than the surrounding temperature. Right? So in terms of an application uh, so maybe a hot object is submerged into colder environment. All right, so that's what this case uh, is sort of looking at. Right? So if that is the case, then what do we know? That means T0 minus Ts, so I'm going to be calling this C, this thing is going to be greater than 0. So in terms of the Newton's Law of Cooling model, which is going to be T of T, is equal to Ts plus C times E to the minus Kt. If C is a positive number and K is a positive number, let's assume, then this is going to be an exponential decay uh, model, right? So this is going to be an exponential decay. So does that make sense? Well, we have a hotter object submerged in a colder environment, so the temperature of that object should decrease since its surrounding uh, temperature is colder than it is. So yes, that should make sense. Right. So if we sort of look at a graph of such types of models, uh, that means our graph should look something like this. Right. Where this temperature, where it levels off, that's the surrounding temperature, and up here is, of course, the initial temperature. Right? And as t goes to infinity, it should converge to Ts. Okay, so let's look at the other scenario, so scenario 2. So let's suppose that Ts is greater than T0. Right? So our initial temperature is lower than the surrounding temperature, so it's like a cold object placed in a hotter or more hot environment. Uh, for example, a cold sandwich into a microwave or something like that. <laughs> or already hot oven, I guess is more appropriate to say. Right? So the temperature should increase. So let's make sure this model actually satisfies that. So if that is the case, uh, then if we subtract both sides by Ts, and we're going to have that T0 minus Ts, which again is the same constant as before, C, 
is going to be less than zero. So let's look at our model again. So t of t is equal to uh, ts plus c e to the minus kt. So again, we're going to assume that k is a positive number. So e to the minus kt is always going to be an exponential decay, but c is a negative number, so that exponential decay is going to flip upside down now. Right? So if we sort of look at our curve, so regardless as t gets big, e to the minus kt gets close to zero, regardless whether if c is positive or negative. Right? But if our exponential decay model was up here and we flip it upside down, then that means uh, our model will now be uh, increasing. It's an exponential growth model if the leading coefficient is negative and it's an exponential decay model. Uh, e to the minus kt negative coefficient is exponential increase, right? So of course down here will be our t0, and it will slowly increase until it gets pretty much close to the surrounding temperature, right? And again, k is a rate parameter, uh, which will vary. So k will be different. So just a side note, k will be different for different types of objects. Uh, for example, some materials allow their temperature to change a little bit more easier than others. Uh, for example, the temperature of wood uh, will be uh, more resistant to a change in temperature than, say, uh, a metal such as iron, copper, or gold. Right? So that's just a uh, brief overview of Newton's Law of Cooling and its individual components, and what they mean, and how to interpret it. So let's look at a couple examples on how to use this model. All right, so I've gone ahead and wrote this problem down that we're going to be working on here to sort of illustrate Newton's Law of Cooling, and it's pretty much as follows. Suppose that you have a metal object and you heat it up to 871 degrees Celsius, which is, which is pretty hot, so don't touch uh, things of that temperature, uh, and then it's placed into a building at room temperature, which is also approximately uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Let us suppose after five minutes the object cools, which it should, to 762 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit more than 100 degrees Celsius than it used to be. Um, so what can we use Newton's Law of Cooling for in terms of this particular scenario? So unless you're a physicist or a chemist, um, then you probably don't know the temperature, uh, uh, the temperature concept, uh, constant associated to this particular model object. So the value of K usually is not going to be known to you. So in practice, in the experimental world, what you need to do is you need to measure the temperature that it starts at, which in this case is going to be 871, and then you're going to measure the temperature of the object after some time has passed. In this case, it's going to be five minutes. So after five minutes, it cools down to 762. So it started at 871. It cools down to 762 after five minutes. With this information, you are able to approximate the value of the cooling constant K. Right? So let's start off by figuring out what the cooling constant K is for this particular metal object. So question one, what is K for this object? All right. So let's just uh, plug all these things into our model uh, that we have here. So our model T of T is going to be equal to 20 plus 871 minus, and then what do we have here? So that's going to be 20, and this is going to be equal to e to the minus kt. So what is this? So this is the surrounding temperature. That's the room that we're placing the object in. That's our starting temperature t0. So this is ts plus parentheses t0 minus uh, ts, and then we have e to the minus kt in terms of our Newton's Law of Cooling model. So therefore, our model to represent temperature is going to be T of T is equal to 20 plus, so 871 minus 20 is going to be 851 times E to the minus KT. So as long as we know K, then we can uh, determine what the temperature is at any time T uh, that we wish. So after, so we're going to be letting T be in minutes. So let T be in minutes. Since that's uh, how long we waited to sort of measure uh, our temperature of our object after five minutes. So after five minutes, 
So after five minutes, so 20 plus 851, e to the minus k times five minutes, our temperature decreased to 762. So we just need to solve this equation for k, and then we're done. So moving things around, we're going to have 762 minus 20 all over 851, and that's going to be equal to e to the minus 5k. Um, so then we're going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation, divide both sides by negative 5, and that's going to give us k. So k in this case is going to be equal to negative 1 fifth times the natural log of 762 minus 20 is going to be 742, all divided by 851. And you can find that that's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.0274. So that's our uh, temperature constant k for this particular metal object. Now I leave it as an exercise to verify the general formula for k. So in general, k is going to be equal to negative 1 divided by the time that you waited until you measured the second time times the natural log of the temperature at that particular time minus Ts, the surrounding temperature, all over T0, the original temperature, minus the surrounding temperature. So you wait, say, 10 minutes, measure the temperature, that's going to be capital T of T, and little t would be 10 minutes in that particular scenario. Right, so that is our general formula for the rate parameter k. So let's ask a, another question. Uh, what will the temperature of the object be? Object B after an hour. So we already have our model, t of t, and we already know our rate parameter k, so now we're just going to plug in an hour into our model and see what happens, right? So remember, our model, t of t, is going to be equal to 20 plus 851 times e to the minus 0 0.0274t, so that's our rate parameter k. Uh, and remember, we're measuring t in minutes here. You cannot change that. Uh, down. Once you find k, our k is measured in terms of minutes, therefore this is in terms of minutes too. So we want in an hour. So t of one hour in terms of minutes, because you can't just plug in one and get an answer because that's not going to make any sense, is going to be equal to t of 60. And that's going to be approximately equal to, since we already rounded k, this is of course approximation. This is going to be approximately equal to 20 plus 851 times e to the minus 0 0.0274 multiplied by 60 inside of the exponent. And you can find that that's going to be equal to approximately 184.4 degrees Celsius. So it's going to cool quite a bit in an hour, but it's still uh, a little hot because room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, we're still 160 to, about 160 degrees Celsius off from that. Right, so there are other questions that you could ask. For example, how long until the object will be, say, 25 degrees Celsius? So just, you know, 5 degrees Celsius off of our room temperature. Okay? So you can find uh, from our model uh, that the general formula for this particular question, because we're looking for a little t, right? So our final time t, so this is going to be t of t. So t of t is going to be equal to 25, and we need to figure out how long, so we need to figure out what little t is going to be. So you can solve Newton's law equation for little t, and you can find that little t is going to be equal to negative 1 divided by our rate parameter times the natural logarithm of capital T of t minus surrounding temperature all over initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature. So that's your general structure, and I leave it to you to sort of verify that that is the case. Plugging in all our information that we know, t is going to be approximately equal to negative 1 divided by 0 0.0274, so that's negative 1 divided by our rate parameter, times the natural logarithm of the temperature we want to know when it's going to reach, so that's going to be 25, minus our surrounding temperature 20, so that number should always be less than that value because it's not going to cool lower than the temperature for which you submerge the material in. 
at least not in the traditional sense. All over 871 are initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature 20. So just uh, simplifying that just a little bit. So T is going to be approximately equal to negative 1 all over 0 0.0274 times the natural logarithm of 5 all over 851. And you can find that T is going to be approximately equal to 187.48 um, minutes. Right? Um, that's a little bit large. Usually we probably want it to be in hours. Uh, so you can find, by converting these minutes into hours, you can find that that's going to be approximately equal to 3.12 hours. But we usually don't use decimals for hours, so convert 0.12 in terms of minutes. And you can find that the time it's going to take 2 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius is going to be approximately 3 hours and 7 minutes. All right. So that is the Newton's Law of Cooling and the three most common questions that are asked associated to these types of problems. In particular, what is the rate parameter? Um, what is the temperature after some time? And how long is it going to take until it reaches some temperature? Hope you enjoyed. As always, if you enjoyed, please like this video, consider leaving a comment, and if you enjoy the channel content, please subscribe. We publish several new topics every single week. Thank you.